Hello there, folks! Welcome to the first ever edition of Fast Facts Coast to Coast. It's the same game, just produced in different time zones. I'm your host, your quiz master of ceremonies, Dan O'Keefe. On vacation. In the studio, generously provided by Mike and Megan Lloyd. More specifically, their balcony. Uh, they are playing tonight, so thank you for allowing us to stay here. Also here tonight, the man who left this area yesterday uh, to be laid over in Las Vegas for three hours on his Southwest flights. Tom Hellmeyer. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm tired, Dan. <laughs> I got in at I 3 a.m. <laughs> yeah, I could have. I we got your text. And it was like, what? That because that was too early. You got in too early. Oh yeah, way too, too early. Too late. Too late. Way yeah. too late. But it was better because uh, I changed my flight last minute. Um, I would have missed a connection in Denver, so we would have been doing this from Denver. Denver to Los Angeles to a computer in Milwaukee. A strange yeah. relay of sorts. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I am in Los Angeles. Tom is in Milwaukee. And this is, it, it feels a little strange that I can't turn to my right and see Tom. Instead, I just see a bookshelf. Um, or actually, I see my reflection. He's pretty cute. Um, but anyway, if you haven't played before, we have a handy dandy little video on how to play Fast Facts. So here it is. Vroom vroom. I'm Charty. Welcome to Fast Facts Live. Here's how to play. There will be five rounds of five questions each. You will have 20 seconds to answer each question. Dan will ask you the questions here in the live stream and you will submit your answers in ChartyBot. ChartyBot can't move forward to the next question unless you submit an answer for the previous question. So even if you don't know an answer, type something in. If an answer is submitted too late, it will not be accepted. You can use the menu in ChartyBot to catch up or move to a specific question if you fall behind. After each round, ChartyBot will ask you if you want to use your double or nothing. If you use your double or nothing and have answered every question correctly, you will get twice as many points for that round. If you missed at least one question in that round, you will get zero points for that round. You may use your double or nothing once per game, so use it wisely. Our final question is the Hail Mary question. ChartyBot will ask you to wager between 0 and 10 points. Once all of the wagers are in, Dan will present the Hail Mary question. If you answer correctly you will earn the amount you wagered, but if you get it wrong you will lose that amount. A tiebreaker question will be asked to everyone after the Hail Mary, but will only be used in the event of a tie for first place. Don't cheat, think fast, and have fun. Welcome to Fast Facts Live. Start your engines, and good luck. So that's how you play Fast Facts. Pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. We got a bunch of teams playing, and I'm going to read off all your names. So in no particular order, we have We Got a Mullet, Flew Away, Quiz Cats, Mjolnir, Fast Facts Fashion Show, Jomo's Mojo, Our Raspberry Bushes Are Dying, Stars and Stripes Forever, California Cool Guys, Forks for Bjorks, Six Simper Tyrannus, and Mallory! With three exclamation points. Thank we, you all we just for had playing. One jump, we just had one jump in. Oh, oh, Tour oh, de Pants. We also have Tour de Pants. That's such a, a great, great last team great to hop in. Team. Uh, speaking of the Tour de France, we don't have any questions about that this week, so I'm not giving anything away. Um, there is no person I would like to be less in the world right now than the person who was holding up the sign that just had <laughs> Grandma Grandpa in Ita or in French or in Italian or something on it yeah. that knocked out half of the Tour de France. <laughs> yeah. They turned themselves into the police because they were looking for them, but good lord. Yeah, there's, like, no other sporting event where something like that would happen. Maybe, like, a marathon, right? but, like, that's, like, on bikes, it's so easy to just domino effect. Yeah, because everybody's so packed in together. Right. Oh. Also, why did they need them to turn themselves in? 
did they not <laughs> figure out who it was from the- I don't think so. Tons of photographic evidence <laughs> or they didn't grab the person <laughs> as they were trying to leave like, hey, that cardboard you're holding seems familiar. Right. It feels, it's kind of like a Bartman situation, except people got hurt this time. Yes. Not just emotionally. Not just emotionally. Like physically. Pain. Yes. Actual, nothing grievous, but it could be bad. It could have been bad injuries. Um, anyway, that's not about the game. This is about the game. Let's get into the game because round one, it's all about this old house, specifically the one that you're in. Question number one. When taking down a load-bearing wall for your open concept floor plan, first, don't. Second, what do you have to put in place to keep the ceiling from falling down? 20 seconds. Question number two. Usually for cooling smaller spaces, what newer air conditioner type is lacking a major component of its predecessors? Question number three. Sliding doors that completely hide inside of the walls are called what? Question number four. Unbroken solid rock often found in New England, for example, that homeboaters have to build on or around is called what? And yes, I did say homeboaters. I messed up. And the last this old house question. And the last this old house question. What term is used to describe running various mechanical, electrical, and plumbing lines through the house before making the final connections? That is it for round number one. If you, like Tom, were watching this old house this morning while he was writing the category, double or nothing. If you weren't, go watch this old house and double or nothing anyway. The YouTube channel is on. great. I have seen a lot of their videos. They're active on TikTok. They are. Which is surprising, but it's very cool. Very interesting. Uh, moving on to round number two, as a helicopter flies above, and it has passed. Coastlines. Whatever you're thinking, stop it and think about this instead. King Dukkha, the world's tallest roller coaster, is found at Six Flags Great Adventure in what state? 20 seconds. Question number two. Lake Compounds in Connecticut is the United States' oldest operating amusement park. What park in Sandusky, Ohio is the second oldest?
Question number three. Six Flags gets its name for the number of flags historically flown over which state? Question number four. What Disneyland ride is the world's first tubular steel continuous track roller coaster? Specific enough? And the last coastline question. We've strayed further from the category. What musician co-owns a theme park bearing her name in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee? That is it for our Coastlines round. If you are upset because you were really hoping that there would be a question about what country has the most coastline, but there was not a question. Double or nothing. I know, Tom, I know that which one. country has the one. most coastline? Well, it's Canada. What is it? Everybody knows it's Canada. That's a, that's a trivia night staple. Do you hear that? Everybody <laughs> knows it's Canada. <laughs> Did you? Huh? We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll have the answers to rounds one and two and more coast to coast fun here on Fast Facts Live. So don't go anywhere.
Dad, we're back. Fast facts, coast to coast. It's like it's magic. Tom and I could talk to each other, even though we're, what, 2,000 miles away? 3,000 miles away? Something like that? I'm just glad I haven't talked to you in like 10 hours and it's... I know, it's been so long like, since 2 o'clock yesterday. I miss you. I miss you too. I miss your constant companionship in the passenger seat of the car. <laughs> Because my legs don't fit in the back seat of the car. <laughs> yeah. You should have seen me on hey. the plane. It was awful. <laughs> oh, I bet it was. Oof. Not looking forward to that. Let's go into the answers for rounds one and two. <laughs> Round one was this old house. Somebody just parked their car, and there's a car alarm going off underneath me. Oh, there they go again. Question one. When taking down a load-bearing wall for your open concept floor plan, what do you have to put in place to keep the ceiling from falling down? I'd recommend not taking down a wall and keeping rooms, but you should put in a header or a beam. A support brace, something like that. Usually for cooling smaller spaces, what newer air conditioner type is lacking a major component of its predecessors? Those are ductless air conditioners. Or split systems. Huey, Dewey, and Louie, they can't be there. Scrooge? Scrooge Mick? Sorry, he, it's all, he's also not there. Sorry, those are duckless air conditioners. Sliding doors that completely hide inside the walls are called what? My mom got this right, and she was probably very excited about it. It's pocket doors. She just got pocket doors installed into the kitchen, and she can't wait to show them off to everybody. Unbroken solid rock often found in New England, for example, that homeboaters have to build on or around is called what? I said homeboaters again. Home builders. It's a difficult word. The answer is a ledge. Not bedrock. Bedrock is everywhere. Specifically New England. Ledge. Allegedly. What term is used to describe running various mechanical, electrical, and plumbing lines through the house before making the final connections? It's called a rough-in. My favorite member of The Temptations, by the way. David Ruffin. Coastlines. King Daka is at Six Flags Great Adventure in New Jersey. Lake Compounds, the greatest name for a roller coaster place in the world, sometimes called an amusement park. The other park that's the second oldest, Cedar Point. Six Flags gets its name because it's the Six Flags that have flown over Texas. What Disneyland ride is the world's first tubular steel continuous track roller coaster? It's not Space Mountain, it's the Matterhorn Bobsleds. And what musician co-owns a theme park bearing her name in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee? Everybody got this one right. It's Dolly Parton. With that, let's move on to round three. It's the picture round. And this week, it was very obvious that we ran out of ideas. And we're writing no, this very late. No. Oh, come on, Tom. Okay. This okay, is a, a little throw bit. it in category. Okay, a little bit. I was traveling yesterday. <laughs> it's name the TV show. We'll show you a picture of it. It's the it's simple. Question one. Question number two, what TV show is this? Show number three, what show is this? Question number four, what show is this?
And last show. What show is this? That is it for round three. Double or nothing if you like TV. All gas, no brakes. Let's move on to round four. Jeez. You have no time to recover. Let's go to weird museums. Question one. According to founder Barry Levinson, what condiment called out to him to create a museum, allegedly saying, if you collect us, they will come. Question two. La Crosse, Kansas is home to a museum dedicated to over 2,000 varieties of what steel product used for keeping people and animals out? Before I move on to question number three, if you just joined, you can go to the menu in ChartyBot and skip to skip route to round four, because that is where we currently Guess are. Guess what? They just and figured I... it out. Beautiful! Let's move on to question three. Roswell, New Mexico is, of course, home to a museum about what phenomena? Question number four. The Neon Museum, home to signs from demolished and defunct casinos, was founded after what historic casino, which held regular performances by the Rat Pack, was demolished? 20 seconds. And question five. The Catton Cabinet Museum in Amsterdam is a museum celebrating what animal? That is it for round number four. Double or nothing if you have a degree in museums. Is that something I can get? There's, uh, you can get a degree in, like, archival studies. Is that, is that tangential? In... Tangen tan, I don't even know. How to... Tangential, tangential to library to studies? Library studies. It is, but you could also get a degree in, like, museum curatorship. I feel like that, like, you get that after you've done something. Yeah, like, you're you're at a level, and you if you want to go up, you got to step yeah, up. Yeah, or it's like, oh, I was, I'm thinking, like, history. Like, I was doing oh. something. Oh. Texts from multiple people. Museum studies programs exist. <laughs> Thank you to Amanda Keeler and Amy Lepp do I, for informing us of that. Do I just get to walk around museums for homework? Because I would do that. And you that. get to give people a little a little death glare if they're standing too close to the stuff. And you just be like, hmm, back away. I mean, I went to the Peterson Automotive Museum yesterday, and it was fantastic. 
and I could Ooh, spend look at that auto focus. all day there. Oh. Oh. oh, there it goes. There it goes. Woohoo! Speaking of going, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll have the answers to the last two rounds and more questions on Fast Facts Live, so stay tuned. Hey, we're back to give a quick scoring update. The top three teams are all separated by two points, and they are We Got a Mullet, Quiz Cats, and Nice Plants. So it's anybody's game, it's close, but guess what? We still got another round of questions, and we've got the Hail Mary question, so everything can change. But before we get into that, I need to fix my hair. And now I'm going to do some business with you. If you want to support us financially, you can do so on Patreon at patreon.com slash fastfactslive. We have different tiers of support, which give you different perks. For example, if you are a patron of our lowest tier, which is $4 or higher, uh, you get an extra $5 if you win that week's edition. So instead of getting $10, you get $15 bucks, amongst other perks, including extra hints. You get to write a category once in a while, depending on your tier. If you don't want to do... So, 
There's a bunch of stuff. Patreon.com slash live. If you don't want to do that, if you want to just give us a one-time donation, you could do so in Chartybot in the tip jar. Any amount of money. If you don't want to support us financially, that is perfectly fine. I worded that wrong. Not if you don't want to support us financially, but if... I don't mean it in a harsh way, which I feel like it kind of sounds like. Uh, but another way that you can support us is through social media. Following our social media accounts at Fast Facts Live, spreading the word, and telling your friends to play, because the more people playing, the more fun it is. And that is the business that I have with you today. Let's get into the answers. Four, round three, the TV shows. This is Seinfeld. This is Mad Men. This is American Dad. This is is The Blacklist, which is still on air. I don't know who's watching it, but it's in season eight. And this is Westworld, as opposed to Eastworld, which is just Clint Eastwood talking to a chair. Why do I Topical feel, joke for nine Why do nine I feel like ago. you didn't like me writing this category? No, it's fine. It was just simple. <laughs> Very easy to go through. Weird Museums. According to Barry Levinson, what kind of been caught out to him saying, if you collect us, they will come. Mustard. It's weird. La Crosse, Kansas is home to a museum dedicated to over 2,000 varieties of what steel product? It's a barbed wire. Roswell, New Mexico has a museum about UFOs. The Neon Museum was created because of the demolition of the Sands Hotel and they could not save the sign. And finally... The Ketten Cabinet in Amsterdam is a museum celebrating what animal? Obviously, it's cats. Meow. That's it for round four. Let's move on to round five. The toss-up. It could be anything. Whoa! Question one. Who was the first president to win the Nobel Peace Prize? 20 seconds. Question number two. One Night in Bangkok is a song that we heard this weekend about 500 times. And it's also from the concept album for the musical Chess, rapped by what British actor and singer? Question number three. The pina is the outer visible part of what body part? Question number four. Mariners pitcher Hector Santiago became the first player this season ejected for allegedly using what? And question five. What word means a mashup of two words to form one? That is it for round number five, which means we only have one and a half questions left because we have the Hail Mary and the toss up. For your information as you're placing your wager, the Hail Mary this week 
What is it about? I don't remember. Uh, ah, history. history. It's about yeah. history. History. Yeah. I wrote it. I should have known this. But what a fool I am. I like this uh, Hail Mary this week. Oh, good. I could not come with, up with one, so I went on a random trivia website and stole it from them. Nice. Theft. Yes. Artistic theft. The worst theft of all. <laughs> You wouldn't download a car. I would. All right, Mallory, Those get your wager in. Sense. Mallory, right, we're waiting a, on you. A, awesome. Let's move on to the question. The term private eye is derived from what company's logo, who had a slogan of, we never sleep. 20 seconds. And just in case of a tie, about how many Americans suffer from some form of sleep disorder? And those are all the questions. That means we only have one thing left to score this bad boy up and figure out who won. So we're going to take one final break and see who is the winner of the inaugural edition of Fast Facts Coast to Coast. Don't go anywhere.
we're back. Let's not waste any time. Let's see who won this bad boy. This bad, bad boy. That's weird. I'll stop that. Toss up. Who was the first president to win the Nobel Peace Prize? You had to be specific. It was Teddy Roosevelt. One of you said Roosevelt. We gave you half a point because you were half correct. You missed the Teddy part, though. Uh, those of you who said FDR, you're half correct. But the FD in the FDR is a subtraction, which gets you zero points. Question two. One Night in Bangkok is a song by Murray Head. A name only a mother could love. Question three. The pinna, the pina, the pina colada is the outer visible part of the ear. That's mine. Mariners pitcher Hector Santiago became the first player this season ejected for allegedly using what? A foreign substance. Stickum, sticky stuff, goop. Whatever you may call it, that's what he was ejected for. And what word means a mashup of two words to form one? That's a portmanteau. Which is surprising because it's three words mashed up together, but toe is spelled incorrectly. Port. Man. Toe. Hail Mary! The term private eye is derived from what company's logo? Who had a slogan of, we never sleep? It is the Pinkerton Detective Agency. They're still around today, and they're terrifying. And the tiebreaker answer. About how many Americans suffer from some form of sleep disorder? A hearty 70 million, which is a good sign for society. Now let's see who won this. From the bottom to the top, starting in 17th place with a score in the negative, but we'll excuse it because they did join late. We have Lisa Vote O'Keefe. In 16th place, we have our Raspberry Bushes Are Dying with three points. In a tie for 14th, Fast Facts Fashion Show and Mjolnir have five points. In 13th, Six Simper Tyrannus has six points. In 12th, Jomo's Mojo has eight points. In 11th, Mallory has nine points. In 10th, Nice Plants has 18 points. In 9th, Forks for Bjorks has 22 points. In 8th, Stars and Stripes Forever have 25. We Got a Mullet is in 7th with 28 points. In a big old tie for fourth, we have the really greasy drama goons, tumbleweeds, and flew away with 30 points. In third place with 33 points, California Cool Guys. In second place with 34 points, we have Tour de Pants. And in first place with 36 points, this week's winner of Fast Facts Live, the Quiz Cats. Congratulations to the Quiz Cats for winning this week because they are patrons. They will be getting a $15 Amazon gift card delivered to them very soon. Thank you to all of you for playing this week's edition of Fast Facts Live. We will be back next week. Tom and I in the same room. At least that's the plan. <laughs> uh, thank you, Tom, for producing the show. Thank you for hosting. You're welcome. Thank you to our social media manager, Molly Von Eschenbach, our Twitch czar, Dennis Tracy, all of our patrons, and to all of you. We'll be back next week, as I said. In the meantime, everybody stay safe, have fun, and get vaccinated. Bye-bye!